Hey everyone, welcome to Two Car Pros. My name is Ryan, and today we're continuing our big block building series. We just got the engine back from the machine shop. Now we're going to prep it, put the camshaft in, make sure it's all nice and clean, and preserve it for a little bit of storage while waiting on some more parts. Um, with all that out of the way, make sure you check out the other videos in this series. I put them on a big playlist here on YouTube, and I'd really appreciate it if you check those out as well. So let's go ahead and get into it. Okay, with Halloween over, we can go ahead and unwrap the engine. And you want to be careful with the razor blade. You don't want to create any kind of gashes or anything that's unsightly on your engine or any kind of mating surface. So just be careful with it and uh, take your time. So that's what our engine looks like with all the plastic off of it. So we're on the uh, driver's side of the engine here. And what I want to go over is the cross thratching inside of the cylinders. It's kind of tricky to see on camera, but deep in there, there's cross thratchings that are kind of in an X pattern. Yeah, you can see that. See the X patterning over there too? You want to make sure every cylinder has this cross thratching X pattern because that's what actually mates your uh, piston rings to the cylinder. And if it doesn't have that, the rings won't mate and it will burn oil. And then the other thing I want to talk about is these dowels on each side. This one here, this one here is two per each side. And if you came back from the machine shop without those, send it back because you're going to need these in order to put the cylinder heads on. And then you also want to check all the threads for the heads and uh, maybe in the bell housing bolts. You need to check all the threads on your engine to make sure a good machine shop will have chased all of those to make sure that they're in good shape. So this is the front of the engine. These are your cam bearings here. You see that little teeny tiny hole just there? That is where your camshaft actually gets lubricated between the cam bearings. And you can see them all the way back there in the mains. My camera's kind of having a hard time focusing, but uh, you want to make sure that all of them are the right way up, and this is pointing straight down so your camshaft can get oil. If these are off even a little bit, uh, you need to send it back to the machine shop and have them put in correctly. So on a Gen 4 big block, uh, such as this one, you have these oil plugs here and here above where the camshaft sits in the engine. And those are internal oil plugs, and if these are not in here, oil will just kind of come out <laughs> right up here and your engine won't have oil pressure and that leads to things breaking. So make sure that uh, these two plugs are in place. So the uh, caps here for the crankshaft, these are actually torqued down to factory specifications all in the correct order. They put a line bore home through here and it needs to all be torqued down so that way when you torque it down with the crank in here, uh, it's all circular and it's all mated together correctly. And then you want to make sure that they put in uh, new freeze plugs on each side. Mine are all brand new, fantastic. And the oil gallery plugs are in their place as well. Because uh, even if one of these is missing, it's going to pee oil everywhere, which you don't want, obviously. And then there's an oil sending unit down here, which is this hole there. And uh, that basically tells your dash how much oil pressure you actually have. And if this isn't in place, it again will squirt oil everywhere. So uh, keep that in mind when we are assembling. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is take off the main caps here and we wanna keep it as organized as possible. So I'll show you my system in a little bit. We need a 13 16 socket and uh, we can remove them like so. So we're going to continue removing these uh, main caps here, making sure that we keep them in order. Now, at least on a Gen 4 big block, um, they are numbered. But if they're not numbered, go ahead and number them with a Sharpie so you can't get lost. Just in case. You never know what happens. So uh, our engine here is basically ready to get ready. Uh, what we need to do now is clean it very thoroughly. The machine shop is going to do the best they can, but you really don't want to trust something this crucial to someone else. You want to make sure that this is clean. So we're going to uh, soap it down with some soap and water, get it all nice and clean, and then blow it dry uh, with some compressed air to make sure there are absolutely no like, little metal chips. It's even stuff that's insanely hard to see or maybe even smaller than you can see. We want that out of there. So we have to make sure that it's nice and clean. So let's go handle that. All right, so we're uh, outside here. Sun is not being too great with us for filming, but uh, we have some soapy water here, the rag, a nice clean rag. And uh, we're just gonna basically wash it here and make sure we get deep down inside the cylinders. Get all... You want to clean every square inch of it basically. There is no such thing as being too thorough at this stage. So 
I'm gonna do that. We're gonna clean the bottom side, flip it over, clean that side, wash it with regular water again, and then hit it with some compressed air. So that should clear out everything. So surface point rust at this point is a bit of an issue, so uh, at this stage it is important to keep the engine wet at all times until we get to the WD-40 stage. With the engine the right side up, it's a lot easier to do the cylinders really well, because obviously uh, that is the most important part. So you want to make sure that is really well clean, along with the uh, camshaft bearings, those need to be cleaned too. I mean, everything needs to be clean, but this is just plain Jane water. Hit the top half like that, and we can turn it back over. And now we gotta pull it out of the sun. Now we're gonna get our uh, air hose, which are rub with a rubber. Uh, spray your attachment because um, you don't want metal because you don't want to gall anything. Alright, the next thing we're going to do is grab some regular WD-40 and hose her on down. This is a rust preventative and it will stop the bare metal from rusting. So now we're gonna blow from the top with our air hose with a rubber uh, sprayer there, and then we'll hit it again with WD-40. Now that it's nice and uh, basically blown dry with a little bit of WD-40 on there, we can give our final coat of WD-40 and be thorough, especially in the cylinders, all the mating surfaces, any bare metal, which is basically the whole thing, needs a nice coat of WD-40 to prevent any kind of rusting while we're working. As even the slightest amount of rust is no good. And I'd rather have too much WD-40 than not enough. So now that we're uh, officially done with cleaning, it is completely spotless. There is no metal anywhere on it. Uh, and it's been blown, as you saw, it has a WD-40 all over it. It is ready for assembly. We're finally taking, done taking stuff on, off. Now we're gonna be putting things on. And uh, that's a little bit of a process, so we're gonna show you some organization skills that'll help you out. All right, so the new part on the table is a Lunati cam. This has the cam and the lifters in it. Uh, I'm going to be using an XXX11232HLK. That link is down below in the description. Now, this is where it's important to figure out what kind of big block you are building. I am building a good street big block, not gonna make an absolute monster of power, but pretty far from stock. So uh, this is a good kind of middle of the road, a little bit higher, uh, hotter street camshaft. Really cool. If you're not really sure what kind of lift and duration you're needing, call my friends at Lunati. They'll hook you up. So what we have here is the Lunati bootlegger. Very cool. It's 150 proof, so you know, it's gonna be good. And no, this box isn't real wood. I wish it was. These are a hydraulic flat tappet lifter. Um, those will work great for us. And then we have our cam shift here. Comes with some assembly grease, always nice and a bootlegger sticker, that's going on my toolbox. If you're really interested, those are all the specs for my camshaft. Uh, if you want to pause and, and read them. If you want to uh, 
find out the real specs of this lift and duration and all that, go ahead and click the link down below in the description. This is the first piece that we're putting in, brand new in the engine. I'm very excited to take it out of its bag. That looks fantastic. All right, so I have the assembly lube from Lenati right here, and this is going to go on all of the lobes here. There's four between each main. And uh, on the main lobes, on the main bearings here, that's gonna be either regular motor oil, gear oil, a mixture of the two, or engine assembly oil. All four are fine. So with this, you wanna just put a bit on. You wanna make sure you got enough for all of them. All of them. Okay, so I put a little dab on the ends of this lobe here, and we're gonna grab our, uh, use our fingers here and massage around the lobe like that. And we're just gonna do that for each one of the lobes here. All right, so uh, all the uh, lifter lobes, we'll say, are um, lubed up with the assembly lube, but uh, we wanna go ahead and put some on the fuel pump lobe as well. That's this one here on a Gen 4 big block because those are have a mechanical fuel pump, mechanical uh, fuel delivery. So the fuel pump lobe is right here and we need to lube that up because um, on a Gen 4 big block, it's a mechanical fuel delivery and it's technically a lobe and we don't want that surface eating fuel pump push rod. And then we also wanna do the distributor gear as well because when you put the distributor uh, back down, that's gonna be dry, so might as well put some assembly lube on that as well, if you have some left over, which you should, there should be plenty. That was pretty generous and I still have quite a bit left. All right, so I got some assembly lube in this cap here and we're gonna put it on these five main journal bearings. Dab it on our fingertips here and go around on each one. Nice film on there for assembly. There we go. Each journal now has a nice film of assembly lube, and each lobe has its own assembly lube on it. We're done with the camshaft for right now. Now we need to turn our attention to the engine. Okay, so we're gonna put some uh, of that engine assembly lube on the bearings here because the uh, camshaft can't be dry when you're assembling it because those surfaces will eat each other so you want to make sure that it has a nice film on there of uh, assembly lube. And again, being generous is better than being stingy. You want to go ahead and, you know, put a fair amount on there. Can't hurt. Alright, so we're going to put the cam in very gently. These are very delicate, freshly machined surfaces, so uh, go slow and take your time, and if it's not going, don't force it. We're gonna be uh, nice and gentle with it. Oh yeah, like that, and catch it on the other side with your finger. Kind of uh, work it around, there we go. There we are, hop that, there we go. Oh yeah, you can feel when it's not right because it binds. And if it's binding and not going, try uh, changing your, um, you know, your not your perspective, but your orientation. And there you go. All right, so that's gonna wrap up uh, for today. And the reason I'm ending here um, is because we're lacking some parts, but it gives me a great time to tell you how to properly store this, but you wanna go ahead and do it this juncture if you need to stop at any time uh, while the engine's kind of disassembled like this, is grab a big trash bag and wrap it around and tie it off so you don't get a lot of air or exposure in there. It all kind of seals it in. Um, so grab yourself a nice big 55 gallon trash bag and put it over like one you one you'd put in your kitchen trash can uh, Will work great and just put it over there and cinch it off and then it'll all be nice and preserved for a while So that is uh, This episode in the can uh, we will be having the next one coming out pretty soon here The goal here is to put this big series here on YouTube and make sure that everyone is able to know how to build a big block on their own in their own garage on their own time
Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you're subscribed, and I'll catch you next time.